of December, you are announced as the president of the FIA. Give us a little insight into what you would change and why you would make those changes. Well, I think the most important thing is to modernize the way the FIA works. And, and one of the things is that the job of president of the FIA is kind of mission impossible. If you really look at the job description, you're supposed to be representing millions of motorists worldwide. You're supposed to be presiding over the governing body of the sport. Uh, with many championships, not just Formula One, all these different tasks, it's actually a superhuman uh, job description. No one can do it, which is why I'm in favor of the, being a professional chief executive. And then more specifically for the individual championships, like Formula One, I would favor creating championship commissioners, a senior person with a lot of experience, be the go-to person, the kind of troubleshooter who's available all the time. More generally, my attitude is to try and make the sport much more attractive to the, the low-cost privateer competitors. And that's right across the board. My, my instinct is to try and help the little guy at the back of the grid and to make sure that costs in every different championship get reduced. You know, we, we ought to be back in the days where you had uh, Eddie Jordan's team occasionally winning, or even more, you know, the attraction of uh, 1968 British Grand Prix, Brands Hatch, Joe Siffert in a Lotus, um, entered by Rob Walker. I mean, it was a wonderful victory by, a, a, you know, an underdog. That is a very attractive aspect of, of the sport. So we've got to find ways of doing this. You've got to be able to have a system where there is the possibility of progress. Otherwise, you will forever disillusion the people who invest in the new, the new startup teams. What about you, your enthusiasm for motorsport? Is it something that came to you later in life? Or have you always been a fan of Formula One motorsport? Did you ever want to drive? Just tell us a little bit about your history with the sport. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I fell in love in most, with motorsport with Formula One when I was nine, watching a black and white TV with Jim Clark in the Lotus 33, going round and round and round. And my mother watched me transfixed and said, look at that. Later on, I raced uh, an MG in saloon cars. And highlight of my career, the only one, was winning a, a race at Brands Hatch. But my excuse is I'm too tall. I'm taller than Gerhard Berger, and he had trouble getting into Formula One cars. So uh, that, that's why I'm not world, never been world champion. Well, actually, that's quite significant now because people are talking about minimum weights in Formula One and how it's penalizing drivers like Hulkenberg. Do you think the minimum weight should be raised? For Definitely. Next year? I, think it, I think it's outrageous. I completely agree with Nigel Mansell. And you know, we don't want Formula One to be you know, like the jockey club with all sort of mini, mini, mini drivers. I mean, why? Why penalize the six-footers of this world you know, as a, as a, as a six-footer? I think it's outrageous. So David, am I talking to the, the next president of the FIA? I think realistically, the chances of me uh, actually getting through all the hurdles to be an officially approved candidate are very significantly stacked against me. It's a bit like quali. I mean, whether I get through into the, into the final shootout is a big question. Um, if I did, uh, I actually think the election would be quite open. Um, it's a secret ballot. The problem is not the ballot box. It's getting into the final shootout. And I say at the moment, it's very much stacked against any challenger. And I think that's wrong. And I think that's why actually already clubs are tabling statute changes for this year's General Assembly to try and change that. Problem is, it's not going to be applied to this election. But we'll see. 